This is a CBR2. CBR2 is a motion detector. The CBR2 can plug directly into a TI graphing calculator. When you uh, purchase the CBR2, it comes with two cables. One cable is a USB cable that allows us to plug directly into a TI-84 Plus calculator. We're going to demonstrate that to you. The CBR2 can also be used with older calculators such as the TI-83 Plus. It requires a different cable. This is the cable that plugs into the bottom of the um, uh, calculator. The other end plugs into the side of the CBR2. Let's go back and, and, and use the USB cable. So I'll put that aside. On, um, on the left-hand side of the CBR2 is a, uh, a USB port. So I'll plug that USB connection into the CBR2. Plug the other USB connector into the 84 plus. After doing that, it wakes the calculator up, automatically launches the uh, easy data application. There's a meter that shows us the current reading from the sensor. I'm going to go ahead and lay this on the table. I want to verify that the sensor is working. I'll just put my hand above the, the uh, motion detector and verify that the reading I'm getting is about uh, is what I would expect. In this case, I'm a little bit less than a half a meter above the uh, motion detector. Um, and that's what I'm seeing on the screen. So since it's, uh, uh, it's working, I'm ready to go ahead and perform a real simple little experiment. We're going to investigate the motion of a ball being tossed in the air. The default experiment with the, uh, the motion detector is, is a data collection of five seconds. This experiment won't take five seconds. What we'll do is we'll just uh, we'll collect some data and we'll let the experiment complete, uh, completely run out. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the ball above the motion detector. Choose the start option. Data collection will begin. Wait a couple seconds. Toss the ball, catch it, and just hold it till the five second experiment ends. And then I will see a graph on the calculator, and let's take a look and see if it seems reasonable. It certainly does. There's a flat line region where I was initially holding the ball. I can see where the ball has been tossed, then caught and held again. When I'm using the, uh, the Easy Data application and the CBR2, one of the things that you want to do is you want to investigate uh, distance versus time plots and velocity versus time plots. Now we have our plot of distance versus time. Let's investigate a little bit on the, the, the plot. We'll press the right arrow and scroll across till we get to the peak where the ball was the furthest away from the motion detector. We can see that point right here. We might be interested in the velocity at that point in time. It's very easy to see the uh, velocity plot with the easy data application. All I have to do is choose the plots option. A list pops up showing me that I can see uh, distance versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. Let's choose the velocity versus time. And here's our plot. And notice also that we're still at that same point, that 1.85 seconds, and we can see what the velocity of the ball was at the very top, which was very, very close to uh, zero. That's one example of the use of the CBR2. Let's look at some other things that you might be able to do with the CBR2. For example, you could investigate the motion of a toy car that's moving across the table, or maybe put the toy car on a ramp and let it accelerate down the ramp or you investigate uh, other falling objects, such as a coffee filter. Maybe you want to investigate the motion of a student as they walk back and forth in front of the CBR2 and, and observe constant speed, or maybe challenge them to uh, move with acceleration and look at those plots. Those are a few examples of the many ways that CBR2 can be used in science and math.